Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Living Foley Show. My name is Pierrette Raymond. I'm your host. Today's guest is Julie Fleming. as She is a lawyer, but most recently has really embraced and started helping those who are caring for loved ones with dementia, with Alzheimer's, and she has founded a nonprofit organization called the Purple Sherpa, which I want to share all the information about. I want to share Julie's story. Many of you will recognize yourselves in that story, and what Julie has to share may be very helpful to you. My assumption is it will be very helpful to you and those that you love. So let's jump right in. So let me tell you a little bit about Julie. First of all, let's say hi to Julie. <laughs> hi, Perrette. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's so good to see you. We've met, geez, how many years ago through uh, oh. a coaching experience that we both lived through. It was fantastic. And we've stayed in touch through the years. Facebook has allowed us to do that. And I've just been watching what you've been doing and how you're becoming such a light and such a support to those who are really struggling with the loved ones with Alzheimer's and dementia. So glad, mm -hmm. glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I have to tell you, Perrette, I've been watching your women living fully and feel the same about what you're doing. So it's such an honor to, to be here with you. Excellent. Well, let's jump right in. Um, so let me tell you about Julie. She wrote a beautiful introduction for me. I'm going to read it because it's really going to give you an idea of what her journey has been uh, in her own words. And then I'll jump in with a few questions as well. So Julie Fleming has practiced law before founding her legal business development consultancy called Fleming Strategic in 2006. In 2011, she planned on moving to Wyoming following a divorce, but she was traveling so much for her business that she didn't have time to find a new home. <laughs> wow. She dropped her bags at her father's home and lived with him for a few days at a time in between her trips. As she spent time with her dad, she began to notice some cognitive issues. After he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2011, Julie decided to stay in Atlanta with him. Julie is an only child, and her father's increasing needs fell entirely on her. I know many of you know that story. She struggled to care for him, to maintain her business, and to have some kind of personal life. It wasn't until 2014 when her dad had a fall that caused substantial injuries that Julie finally realized what everyone had been telling her. She couldn't do it all by herself. She began to look for help, and over the years, Julie has discovered the void and support for family, caregiver, family caregivers who are dealing with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. She did a ton of reading to learn how to help her dad most effectively, and she began to learn how to care for herself at the same time, which is such a big struggle for many. Though she would be the first to say that she's still learning every single day, it was in 2000, 2015 that Julie began floating trial balloons on the internet, building the community, and gathering the resources she wished she had access to. Last year, she launched the Purple Sherpa, a nonprofit organization devoted to supporting dementia family caregivers with real world, been there, done that, one step at a time insight, advice, and solace. Her goal is to help caregivers and their loved ones to live, really live, as well as possible despite dementia. The Purple Sherpa now serves thousands of people worldwide through a private, through a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, and a virtual and virtual support groups. And Julie is hard at work to find ways to help caregivers even more, and thus her reason for being here today. So I know that both our viewers and listeners really can relate to what you've experienced with your father. Can you tell us? What was that turning point in your journey when you knew you personally had to do something to, to bridge the gap from what you were experiencing? You know, I could see issues with my dad for such a long time before he was diagnosed. And there was a period there where, looking back, I realized he was in the early, maybe even early middle stages of Alzheimer's. He wasn't uh, diagnosed until middle stages. Mm. And my friends kept saying to me, you've got to get help. You've got to get help. 
And I was so deeply into the weeds of caring for him that I couldn't even see what help could do for me. I had no idea. It was just pure tunnel vision. And the biggest turning point for me was one Saturday, he went out for a walk and I had slipped a a little monitoring device into his back pocket. So it's a little GPS. I was able to track him as he walked around the neighborhood and everything looked perfectly normal. When he got back, I was out of the room, came back in. He was sitting on the sofa with blood just gushing from his face and he had fallen. And that led to about, oh, I guess a two and a half week stay in the hospital that I did not think he would survive. And when he came out, he had lost all of what are known as the activities of daily living. So he could not care for himself. And at that point, I realized I I can't care for someone else 24-7 with no backup, Um, frankly, with no idea other than books that I had read what I was doing. Um, and that's when I realized I had to get some sort of help and I had to try to find a way to connect to other people who were having this experience. So tell me about the journey into the Purple Sherpa, because you started with the Alzheimer's Caregiver Minute. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to do that? And then what has been the response? Mm. Well, the response has been tremendous. I, I really feel like I have made most of the mistakes that one can make. And I wanted to make the path easier for other people. So I started doing these videos and I called it the Alzheimer's Caregiver Minute because uh, the videos were typically two minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And I would talk about things like, okay, so you think you know everything you need to know about medical decision making. Let me tell you about the problem I fell into when, as a lawyer, I thought I had all the documents, I thought I'd had all the conversations, I thought I was good to go, and I found out I was wrong. Mm. And so it was that kind of, the thing that you never read about in books, um, that sort of advice that I wanted to share with people. And I started putting videos out, I showed them to some friends, the feedback was terrific, and almost everybody I showed it to said some version of, oh, I know somebody who's dealing with this, do you mind if I pass this on? (laughs) And so the videos started going all around, started the Facebook page, Um, we're now bumping up against 40,000 people. Uh, I saw that this morning at the Purple, for those that want to go check it out, at time of recording, the Purple Sherpa on Facebook is, was at 39K. So yeah, it's incredible. Wow. It has grown. It it tells you the need. And what's interesting to me is there's so many resources out there. And yet the response to this particular one has been so phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. So let me refer our viewers and our listeners to ways to connect with you before we continue. So you have an open Facebook page at The Purple Sherpa on Facebook, Mm -hmm. and that's open to the general public. They simply have to give you a like, and that'll start showing up in their feed, correct? Correct, yes. Now you also have base camp, and we'll get to the story behind The Purple Sherpa, what that means and why there's a base camp. So Mm -hmm. it's The Purple Sherpa Base Camp. That is a closed group. They have to request to be part of the group, correct? Correct, yes. And I'm part of that group. And the stories of what people are going through and the support around that is absolutely phenomenal. It's a beautiful group where it's non-judgmental, it's open, it's caring, it's supportive. It's the real stuff, the real stuff. And yeah. then you have the page for the nonprofit at the purplesherpa.org, correct? Correct, yes. And there are resources there and we'll get into what the vision of the Purple Sherpa is and what we can do to support you there. And then your personal page at julieflemming.com. Right. So for viewers and listeners, if you want to go poke around while we're speaking, do go ahead, request to be part of the Facebook page first, see if this is a good fit for you, and then reach out to Julie to join the closed group. So what are some of the biggest challenges that people are facing where it's almost that little, that little feeling, I know I need help, right? I, I can't do this on my own anymore. And you got to that point. So what are those first steps into asking for help because now they're overwhelmed? So what are they facing in terms of challenges? And what are some of the first steps to get some help and support? 
So I think one of the first things that happens to people is they realize that the, their loved one has changed in ways that perhaps they don't recognize or understand. And so getting feedback from other care partners and caregivers is so important. Just somebody saying, yeah, that's, that's usual. I went through that too. Here's how I dealt with it. And that's the whole reason that the base camp exists is to get that kind of feedback. The other thing that's important, reading is fabulous. I will tell you the, the book that's probably known as the Bible of Alzheimer's care is called The 36 Hour Day. Mm. It is a wonderful book. I started reading it before my dad was diagnosed. And I have to tell you, Perrette, when I was reading it, I got to a point where I realized if I continued, I would get so depressed, I would basically be non-functional. Mm. Because the, the thing with dementia is that the losses are so numerous and they're so big. And if you look too far down the road and see what might happen, because not, not everything happens for everyone, mm -hmm. it can be paralyzing. Yeah. So that's the other benefit of being with other caregivers is that you can see this thing that was unthinkable. Um, you know, the thought of my dad not being able to feed himself, unthinkable. Mm -hmm but you get through it step by step. And when you see other people getting through it and saying, you know, I didn't know how I would, and I did, you realize that you too can get through it. So it's called the 36 hour week day. The 36 hour day. day. So yeah. I'll put the link with the show notes so people can go get that. I'm, I'm assuming it's available online for purchase. It is. So yes. I'll put that link there for those that are interested in, in learning more about that. So what have been the greatest things that you've come to learn? Some of the best tips that, you know, that stuff that, Julie, I'm going through this. What, what are your recommendations? I know there's the different stages, right? And with every stage comes different challenges and more demands on time and care. Mm -hmm. so I'll let you lead the answer to this. I'm just curious because people are going to be saying, well, what do I do now? Where, where do I go for this? And I know you have great resources. So, what would, be, what would be your best advice for those that are watching and listening? <clears throat> the first thing that I would say is make sure you have your legal and your, your medical advance directives lined up. Um, it is so important. The, the structures for getting financial help are minimal. <laughs> right. And if you are going to qualify for assistance sometime down the road when you really need it, the things you need to do in advance in order to set yourself up for that. So getting some help with that, ideally from an attorney who specializes in elder care, okay. um, or I can send you a link, Perrette, with some terrific resources that will guide you through those steps. Great. So I'll include that for those that are my um, our American viewers and listeners, and I'll I'll marry that with those for the Canadians who are watching as well. Perfect. And then I would just recommend if you're watching outside of North America, you can quickly find these resources by doing a search online, correct? Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. In most parts of the world. And if you can't find them, you can at least analogize from what's going on. Because the basic thing is that your loved one will get to the point where he or she can no longer make decisions right. for himself. And you need to have things in place so that you have the legal right to do so. Right. So what are those things quickly? A power of attorney. Mm -hmm. um, powers of attorney that you may need for banks, for utility companies. There are a lot of organizations that will not accept just the general power of attorney. That's one thing I fell into pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the advanced directive for medical care, whatever that may be called. Uh, and then again, looking at, in the U.S., there's spend-down policies so that you can get access to Medicaid and some other things. So getting the legal, medical, uh, financial side of things lined up. Okay, very good. So let's keep going. So first step, get, your, get the medical documents, get your power of attorneys, your advanced care directives in order, make sure to have those conversations with your loved ones. I think that goes across the board. We should all have that. I still have those in place already. Um, so what would be some other tips and suggestions you would make to our viewers and listeners? The next thing is to be sure that you have a diagnosis. Dementia is an umbrella. 
And there are a lot of different kinds of dementias. Alzheimer's is the best known and the most common. There's Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal lobe dementia, a lot of other kinds. And sometimes, especially if someone is seeing a, a family practitioner, they'll say, ah, it's dementia, period. That's the end of the story. But we, you need to know what kind because there are different treatments that can slow, not stop, but slow the, the progression of the disease. And different medications are appropriate for different kinds of dementia. So you need to get a clear diagnosis. That's number two. All right. You also need to be sure that you have a doctor who is on your team because as the, the disease progresses, chances are you're going to need more and more help in terms of medications to help with various symptoms, um, perhaps with various kinds of behaviors, although that's sort of a sticky wicket in many ways, um, with other things that will impact how the dementia shows up. So you need to have a good medical team and in most cases, though not all cases, a family practitioner just isn't enough. You need a neurologist. So you've got to have the medical side lined up. Right. And then you need to get education. There is, I call her a dementia education rock star. <laughs> her name is Tipa Snow, T-E-E-P-A Snow. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with her, Perel? Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Um, she has amazing videos available online. She does trainings around the world. If you can get to a training, do. That, that was a game changer for me in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get to a training, that's okay. She has a lot that's available for free. She also has an entire video library <coughs> Excuse me. that's available. Okay. So that, that is one of the best things that you can do for yourself and for your loved one. Fantastic. Great. Let's, let's keep going. Great tips, great advice. We'll have that listed in the show notes. What was, what was the, what's the story behind the purple Sherpa and what's the vision for it? Sure. So the story is this. Imagine. <coughs> so we've got a tickle. All right. It's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Imagine that you're sitting at home one day. And your mom or your dad or someone comes to you and says, guess what? I'm going to go climb Mount Everest and you're going with me. And you say, well, I don't really want to go climb Mount Everest. And they say, that doesn't matter. I'm going and you're coming. And by the way, we're leaving right now. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're standing at base camp on Mount Everest and you are cold because you're wearing t-shirt and jeans or whatever you were wearing. And you're looking around and you're thinking, wow, this is totally unfamiliar to me. I bet there's stuff that I ought to know that I don't know, but that's okay. I'm smart. I'm resourceful. I'm capable. We're going to do this thing. It's, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be okay. And you probably know that you have people at home who will support you and who will help you in any way that you can. So you start off, you're climbing, you're, you're bringing your family member with you. It's hard, but you're making it. And then at some point, you get partway up the mountain. You look around. It's just the two of you. The people who said and meant that they would be there for you are probably still there in some way supporting you, but they're not there pushing you up the mountain or giving you food or keeping you warm. And you realize that you don't have things like <laughs> water bottles, like oxygen, like I don't even know the right word, but the, the mountain climbing equipment that you need. And you realize that your loved one isn't doing so well, you know, and, and you discover that she can't go back down to base camp and she's not going to be able to make it to the summit of the mountain. And you look around and you realize you have two choices. Number one is you can either get things in line so that you can go to the summit and you can plant the flag for yourself and your loved one, or you're both going to die on the mountain. And the purple Sherpa, Sherpa is the person who helps people climb Mount Everest. Purple is the color for dementia awareness. Mm -hmm. So a purple Sherpa is someone who has been there, who's been through this experience and leaves the oxygen bottles and leaves the equipment that you need and helps you get up that mountain so that you can plant the flag for yourself and your loved one. So that's what the purple Sherpa is. Beautiful. Um, the vision flows very much from that. 
We educate and support care partners and caregivers. We advocate for people who have dementia as well as those who care for them. And we're a very new organization. Um, we are, <laughs> this is really the first full year of operation as a yeah. nonprofit. Um, but as we get funds together, we're going to start offering grants to families for respite care for handyman services so that someone can remain safely in the home, mm -hmm. or errand services for groceries and, and drugstore runs and things like that, things that will support the caregiver. Right. And in the meantime, as you said, we offer the online services. We also offer every month a telephone support group and a video support group so that people can meet others who are in the same experience and know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. How can we help? Number one is if you or someone you know is affected by dementia, please join us. Please go to the Purple Sherpa page and start getting that feed. Uh, please join the base camp. Um, I, I just have to brag on this group. It is an amazing group of people. And there is no drama in this group. It's phenomenal. Um, that will let the person who's affected know that he or she's not alone. Um, if you are not yet affected by dementia, and unfortunately the yet is important because the way that dementia is increasing worldwide, chances are everyone is going to have some sort of, of connection with it at some point. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not yet affected, as you're out in your community, if you see people who are, speak to them. It's such a simple thing, but I remember I, I traveled with my dad quite a bit. And we were in Yellowstone one time, and we were in a little restaurant, short order restaurant, and he had gone to get a Coke or something. And I was standing up and watching him, and the couple next to me said, we, we have been watching you. And it makes me cry. <laughs> you care for him so well. And just that recognition, this was at a time when he was definitely affected, significantly affected, mm -hmm. uh, but it, he had not yet had the fall. And so I was doing this all alone. And just being seen right. was so incredible. So speak to the caregiver. Speak to the person who has dementia. There is such a stigma still around dementia that just breaking through and recognizing that person and recognizing that yeah, they're different than they used to be, mm -hmm. but the person they always have been is still there. Right. And finally, if you'd like to get involved more with the Purple Sherpa, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, we're starting to launch a one-on-one -on -one peer support uh, program. And we also need help with social media and outreach and fundraising and all kinds of things. So if you want to help, we can put you to work. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> and that, they can go to thepurplesherpa.org where the website is. That's your home, the Purple Sherpa's home. And then obviously the Facebook groups, the Purple Sherpa and the Purple Sherpa, Sherpa Base Camp. And then there's your website at julieflemming.com. Yes. What's your definition of living fully, Julie? Living fully to me means making the most use of the gifts, the gifts that you have been given. It means being who you are meant to be in this world. Um, in my vision, that means giving back so that you leave your world as well as the world a better place than it was. And you do it in the unique way that only you can do it. Hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Any final thoughts for our viewers and listeners? I just want to, well, number one, again, Pierrette, commend you and, and thank you for the work that you're doing to make this world a better place and to encourage women and, and people to live fully. Um, and I think that's such an important thing because the other thing that tends to happen for dementia family caregivers is the world shrinks and shrinks mm -hmm. and shrinks. And so if you are someone who's caring for a person who has dementia, and you feel like the world is just closing in around you, take five minutes every single day and do something that reclaims your life. 
Mm. It doesn't have to be big. It can be something as little and dumb. For me, I'll hold my nails up. I wear red nail polish because that reminds me, I'm someone who likes red nail polish. It's stupid. It doesn't look particularly good because I don't have that kind of time. But it reminds me of who I am. Do that. Mm. Reclaim some part of your life. That's the most important thing I can say. And self-care. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it is self <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you so very much, Julie. It was my honor to have you on the Living Fully show. I know you have a big mission ahead of you and uh, the, the biggest heart to fulfill that and the community that you are serving appreciate you. So for our viewers and listeners, again, you can go to the Facebook page at The Purple Sherpa. To join the private group, go to the Purple Sherpa Base Camp, request to join the group, and then you can find more information and resources at thepurplesherpa.org or through Julie's website at julieflemming.com. So thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Perrette. Thank you for having me. So for viewers and listeners, for more Living Fully shows, go to my website at pietatraymond.com. If you want more information about women living fully, go to womenlivingfully.com. Thank you, and I will see you on our next episode.